Doomers and Mirrors Edgers, welcome to this video. Today we're taking a look at Stop Dead, one of the most unique games I've played in a while, and today's father behind the keyboard is no other than the Swedish Slim Bratsky. And my mission today is to help you figure out if this game is worth your time and buckaroonies or not. So let's do this. Please pay attention. Perfection. So what is Stop Dead, my friends? Well, to be honest, I have no idea exactly what to categorize this as. It's one of the most unique games I have played in a while. You, you get to embody a superhuman who has been manipulated by a rogue AI who set out to destroy its makers. And that would be us, the humans. How this AI has manipulated you is by implementing you with superpowers, making you turn from an average class human into an S-tier killing machine that can run, jump, slide, crouch, bunny hop like a goddamn maniac and pull hundreds of objects towards you with the telekinetic power and use those objects as projectiles to fire at your enemies. But it's not all flowers and sunshine. These powers, they come with a twist. If you deviate from your current mission area, you're dead. Or if you stop moving for as long as half a second, you're dead. The goal is always to get as many crit kills as possible and to finish the level in the fastest possible time, making this game a speedrunning challenge game much like Warstride challenges, although the core game is completely different from one another. So as I said, the goal is to get through the levels as fast as possible with the most amount of headshots as you can nail to increase your score. The levels in general are around 1-3 to three minutes long and if you fail, it's back to the start of the level. Now the average length of a level, it's okay, it doesn't get tedious when you have to restart apart from two levels. They just felt a bit too long with too many areas filled with enemies and no real clear path as to where to go. I mean, you could wander off from the objective, which was to kill two targeted people, managing to find the right way, approaching each combat scenario so you manage to kill everyone without getting killed yourself might sound easy enough on paper, but when it gets too much in one level, it simply gets too tedious to restart a 15th time. For me, all I needed was a short break to get myself on track again, but mm, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to break my keyboard more than once playing those two levels. But I have to say that the rest of the levels, they are in good length. I mean, some of them are just perfect, others they're good, and the rest is okay. And in the levels, you will be looking for the fastest possible way. Many levels offers many alternative routes and shortcuts. And in most levels, it's actually quite easy just getting to the end, but it's harder finding the fastest way and nailing as many headshots as possible on the way. Now, I'd say overall, I really like this balance and the level design in general. It's a good mix of outdoor and indoor environments with both kitchens, office areas, warehouse-like buildings, and so on. And it all blends and fits the theme of the game, but it always manages to feel different enough to never feel repetitive. But there is something I would have liked to see more of in the levels. I always felt like I was lacking platform forming puzzles in the game. There is not a single jump pad apart from a fan that gives you a small boost when you're already in the air. And there are rails that you can grind, but they are very far and few in between. So more use of the platforming mechanics that are in the game and add in even more to add variation into the core gameplay loop of running and killing and the level design would have been even better than it already is. Now the enemies, they are okay. There isn't much variety to them, apart from cannon fodder enemies with weapons to bigger tankier enemies with weapons. And here it would have been really cool if say there was a stationary flying drone where you could maybe drag yourself towards it to get momentum in the air with your telekinesis power. And that's just an example to add in more variety to the enemies. Overall, just adding more types of different enemies, as the game overall just screams of uniqueness but never really reaches for it fully. The bosses on the other hand, they were actually really good fun in my opinion. They both stick out with their design and their attacks, and the challenge, it actually felt pretty fair battling them. But I was actually lacking a reward after defeating them. Giving me a new ability or something after defeating a boss would have been really nice. Now the weapons is an interesting one, as technically you only have one weapon, and that is your telekinesis ability. And with it you can pick up hundreds of items, but only one 
one at a time and fling them at your enemies. Or you can kill an enemy and take their weapon, hold that weapon with your telekinesis and fire it. And that's something I really love with the game. All the items seems to do the same amount of damage depending on where you hit the enemy, but the weapons they differ a lot from each other. And there's also a decent amount of different weapons in the game, ranging from one-shotting snipers to energy assault rifles. Now the audio, it's good. I especially love the splash effect of critically hitting an enemy. They are very squishy and satisfying to slay. The music, it's alright, nothing that really stood out to me. And in all honesty, I had a hard time even noticing the music in the game as you're constantly tip-tapping on your toes to survive. The weapons on the other hand, they were actually surprisingly good sounding and looking. I really like them. The designs, they I could be a little bit crazier, but definitely does the job. And even though you're holding them with your telekinesis, they still have great visual feedback to them. So good job overall in the audio segment, maybe amp up the music a bit so it fits the hectic gameplay of the game, and you would have had a banger audio segment in this review. As you might have noticed, the graphics are going for a more comic book style than anything else, and to be honest I quite like it, because everything is so colorful and clean, it's very easy to read the environment, enemy positions and so on. Which is quite an important thing to take into consideration in a fast paced game like this, but overall it does look very pleasant to look at, with a very safe and neutral art style. So would I recommend this game? Yes, yes, and yes, I would. I found myself saying just one more time for over an hour past my bedtime simply because it was so much fun and you're constantly given the feeling that you can do better. Also, I have to say it was very fun trying to beat the times and scores of my fellow Bratskits from the Discord, which you should join, linked in the description. But before you rush off and buy this, know that if you plan on just giving it one spin with no intention of replaying levels to get better, then you will most likely be done with the game in around three hours or so. But in two months time, the game drops in its 1.0 release with more maps and hopefully more game modes with different challenges. As is right now, there's only one game mode with two leaderboard challenges. One focuses on points that you get from doing critical kills and looking for secrets. And the other challenge is simply time. Be as fast as you possibly can. And I also want to mention this, don't be afraid of it looking too fast. Trust me, you will be able to learn and master the game. If I can, so can you. So whether you decided if this game is for you or not, don't worry, I got more for you right here.